I am Dooms Vince, and this is day 91 of Spawn Year. Vince seems to be at his wit's end. He came to me after I finished today's comic, and he said he just can't take it anymore. He's tired of the confusing narrative and the poor planning, and he says he's tired of constantly having to come up with fresh ways to torment me. I've been at this for three straight months now, and even though he made me commit to 365 reviews, even though he called it Spawn Year, he says he really thought I would have given in by now, and that he's been moping ever since his proposition to let me spend eternity in that kitchen with my imaginary son drinking Mountain Dew. He says he thought he totally had me that time. He asked me to fill out an evaluation of his supervillain performance, the effectiveness of his evil machinations, how doomed I felt on a daily basis on a scale of 1 to 10, that sort of thing. He said he hopes I'm not too disappointed, as if he's letting me down by letting me return to my family and not forcing me to spend the next nine months reviewing the single most drawn-out comic I've ever read on pain of being buried alive. He seemed really bent out of shape about it, defeated that I was ready to keep on, and ultimately Spawn Year has become more unbearable for him than it has for me. I'm skeptical, but he looked so beaten, so sincere. He's always been a remarkably mediocre supervillain. Maybe this plot was too good. So good that he broke himself before he could break me. And so this is, apparently, my final review. Doomsvent says when I finish this entry, I'll disappear. No more graveyard. No more spawn here. He could just be teasing me again, but he's never talked about sending me home early, never dangled what I truly wanted right in front of my face like this. Either way, I would have to review this issue anyway. I'm not going to give my hopes up, but I'm really interested to see what happens to me when I'm finished. This issue is pretty sparse on story, even for a Spawn comic. It opens with Spawn coming to Jason Wynn at home in his bed, ready to finally kill him in cold blood. Spawn's had plenty of opportunities before this he's never taken. He wasted time helping Terry gather evidence on him, and he hesitated for a long time after Cog says this is what Hell wants, and that Wynn is a much smaller piece of the puzzle than he seems. He's going through with it now, after Clouds retcon Al's whole origin and claimed Wynn wasn't responsible at all. Then again, I can't begrudge him ignoring the ramblings of an unreliable demon in a dream he had right after staring at said demon's head on a stick before going to sleep. Still, it seems an arbitrary time to finally go through with it, and Wynn is still a complete moron. Not only should Spawn's identity be obvious to him just by default, knowing there's hell and an afterlife, but he goes on about how much Spawn seems to care about Terry and Wanda. And he threatens them as leverage. He says if Spawn kills him, he has contingencies in place for the entire Fitzgerald family to get the axe. At the very least, Wynn should have realized Spawn is Al in this scene, where Al goes on and on about how he worked for him. Hmm, he was my assassin, and he has a real soft spot for Wanda Blake. Al's name never crossed his mind. They reach a stalemate when Spawn threatens to find Wynn later in his office, despite Wynn's own threat. Not sure what that'll accomplish. As long as Spawn thinks Wynn has a finger on a trigger to take out Wanda, there's not much Spawn can do to him. Later, Angela shows up in Rat City like we just saw in Curse of the Spawn number 10. I was totally dumbfounded by this. It's a completely different exchange than the one I just read yesterday, but somehow both earn the same continuity, even though they somehow have to occur at precisely the same time. The differences are inconsequential. Surprisingly, McFarlane doesn't really pave over any of McElroy's story. He just has Angela explain the universe is about to unravel because of the Kron, and she abruptly disappears. That's it. Not a continuation of where she and Spawn were in Curse, just rewriting that scene so she's there three pages and then she's gone. Kind of a misleading cover, isn't it? Sure looks like there's going to be more to it than that. This is another issue where the few bland non-events we get are stretched to fill the page count. All that really matters and is really worth looking at is the last page, where Al somehow suddenly has his real face back. <gasps> 
No clue yet what caused it, but I hope McFarlane uses the opportunity to let Al lighten up a little. Finally, he has a reason to go out and party. For me, though, it might not matter. If Doom's events is to be believed, the face of Al Simmons is the last panel in a Spawn comic I'll ever have to write about. Dear reader, if you were somehow reading this, you have in a strange way been my companion throughout this journey, and I thank you deeply for your patience and your attentiveness these 91 long days. Farewell forever, I hope. Signed, Captain Logan. It's April Fool's Day, 